Wholesale real estate is the fastest and easiest way to break into real estate investing for three primary reasons. It isn't complicated, so you can learn how and start doing it right away. Two, you can make a lot of money per transaction. 10,000 is normal and some deals can make over 20,000. And three, you can get started with little to no money, so it's very low risk. Once you learn how to wholesale, you can choose one of two routes to go or both. You can either continue to wholesale and scale a big wholesale operation. There are wholesalers right now doing a million dollars a month in wholesale income. Or you could transition into other investing strategies like buy and hold or fix and flip. A lot of investors use wholesaling as a gateway into other things. Or if you're like me, you could do both. I still wholesale, but I also do fix and flip, creative financing, new construction, and recently I'm doing several hotel projects in Puerto Rico where I live. My point is wholesale real estate gives you options and flexibility, and once you get good at it, the sky is the limit. There's no ceiling on what you can do. And I hope that inspires you. So if you're serious about becoming financially free through the power of real estate and you're ready to get started, let me break down for you five different methods to wholesale houses with no money. I'm also gonna reference other videos and several free resources to help you implement these five strategies right away. But first, if you don't know me, I'm Jerry Norton. I make millions of dollars a year wholesaling and flipping houses. And here on my YouTube channel, I show you how to do the same. So if you wanna be a flipping genius like me and live your dream life, subscribe to my channel and watch my videos. The first method to wholesale with no money is the most common and that is to do an assignment of contract. Now, in order to understand the assignment method, you first have to understand what a contract is. In the context of real estate, a contract is a legally binding agreement between a buyer and a seller that outlines the terms of the property for sale. Now, the terms include the price, the closing date, and so on. So here's how it works. A wholesaler finds a distressed property where the seller is motivated to sell that unwanted property at a discount. Once the seller and the wholesaler agree on price and terms, they execute a written purchase and sale agreement. However, instead of buying the property per the contract, the wholesaler assigns or flips his contract to a different buyer known as the cash buyer. This is where the assignment of contract comes in. An assignment of contract is when the wholesaler transfers the rights and obligations of his real estate contract to the cash buyer for a fee. By doing so, the wholesaler essentially becomes a middleman by assigning his rights to the property to a new end buyer. At that point, the cash buyer steps in, takes over the contract, and is responsible for fulfilling the price and terms of that contract. On the day of closing, the cash buyer pays the seller the agreed upon price and also pays the wholesaler the agreed upon assignment fee and everyone wins. The seller sold the property he did not want, the wholesaler got paid for putting the deal together, and the new cash buyer gets a good price on a property without having to do any of the legwork to find the deal. Now let me give you a quick example to illustrate how a wholesale transaction works. Let's say a wholesaler finds a great deal and the seller agrees to sell it for 90,000, and they execute a contract. Then the wholesaler takes the deal to a local cash buyer who wants the deal and agrees to buy the property for 100,000 and they execute an assignment agreement. On the day of closing, the cash buyer funds the purchase for 100,000 plus closing fees. The seller gets 90,000 as agreed in the original contract and the wholesaler gets $10,000. In a nutshell, that's the assignment method. Now, the reason why the assignment method is the most common method to wholesale is because the wholesaler never actually purchases the property, so he doesn't need any money, making it a very attractive strategy for new investors. While the assignment method is a no money strategy, it can be a very time intensive strategy because you have to find motivated sellers and make a lot of offers. Now, let me give you some valuable resources so that you have everything you need to start doing the assignment strategy. First, I'll give you both my purchase and sale agreement and my assignment agreement absolutely free. You can use these contracts in any market with sellers and cash buyers. Just go to wholesalercontracts.com to download those for free. I'll also give you my seller script so that you know exactly what to say when making offers. To download that for free, just go to freesellerscripts.com. Once you have the paperwork and the scripts, next is where to find these motivated sellers. For that, go to joinpropwire.com where you can search and download an unlimited amount of motivated sellers and distressed property data for free. With over 157 million records nationwide, Propwire is the best place to go for data. 
Again, just go to joinpropwire.com. And like I said, it's absolutely free, but I recommend you watch a video where I show the exact list and the exact filters to search and how to get phone numbers and how to call sellers. It's the perfect video if you have time but no money and you're looking to do three to five wholesale deals a month. I'll put the link to that video as well in the description below for you. Okay, the second method to wholesale with no money is to use the double close method. The double close method is similar to the assignment method except for how the deal is structured. With the double close method, you still find a distressed property and you still execute a contract with a motivated seller at a discount and you still find a cash buyer who will pay more for the property just like you do with the assignment method. The difference though is instead of assigning the contract, you actually close and purchase the property from the seller and then immediately resell the property to your cash buyer, which is why it's called a double closing. You close once with the seller and then right away close again with the cash buyer. The downside to double closing wholesale deals is unlike with the assignment method, you have to come up with the cash to buy the property for the first closing and you also have to pay closing fees when you buy the property and again when you resell it. Now I'll show you in a minute how to do this with none of your own money, but those additional fees to double close eat into your wholesale profit. So why would anyone do the double close method over the assignment method? For two reasons. The first is out of necessity. Some contracts such as bank owned properties or auction properties have what's called a no assignment clause. That prevents you from assigning your contract. If that's the case, then you have no choice but to do a double closing. Side note, I developed a method to still do a single closing where there is a no assignment clause using a unique LLC strategy. I did a video that breaks it down in detail, link in the description. Now the other reason why you may decide to do a double close instead of the assignment is to avoid disclosing your wholesale fee. You see, when you use the assignment method, the cash buyer sees your wholesale fee right on the closing statement. So they know exactly how much you're making. Now that's fine if the fee is nominal, but what happens if your wholesale fee is 25,000, 50,000 or higher? It shouldn't matter, but that may cause an issue with the cash buyer. When you double close, the cash buyer doesn't know what you just bought the property for from the seller since that was the first closing, so he has no idea how much you made. For that reason, some wholesalers will intentionally double close and pay the extra fees so the cash buyer doesn't know how much he's making on the deal. Now, how is this a no money strategy? Well, there are specialized lenders called transactional funding that will fund 100% of the double closing for you. They get paid out of the proceeds from the second closing. In fact, this is a service that my company provides. I did a training all about how it works and I'll even fund your first deal for free. Inevitably, you will need to double close some deals either unintentionally or intentionally. So having funding at your disposal is a smart move. To learn how to use my funding for your double closing deals, go to usejerryscash.com. Now also when doing the double close method, you'll need a different purchase and sale agreement to use with your cash buyer and I'll give that to you for free as well. It's included as a free download at wholesalercontracts.com. Now before we move to method three, there is a unique method to double close in escrow and use the cash buyer's funds from closing two to fund closing one with the seller. Now this is an advanced strategy and I did a video that explains how to do it in detail, link in the description. Keep in mind, in the beginning of your wholesale journey, you're gonna spend the majority of your time finding leads, talking to sellers, negotiating and making offers. So imagine having a ready cash buyer once you get those good deals. It's one less thing to worry about and I buy houses nationwide. As long as it's a good deal, I'll buy it and pay you $10,000 for every deal you bring me that meets my criteria. If that sounds exciting to you, just go to my10kcheck.com to learn more. Okay, method number three has gained a lot of popularity in recent years, and that's the Novation method. With the first two methods, the wholesaler's end buyer is a cash buyer investor. With a Novation, the wholesaler's end buyer is typically a retail buyer or a homeowner who in most cases is willing to pay a lot more than an investor because they intend to live in the home rather than make money flipping or renting it. But there are a few challenges with wholesaling to a retail buyer. First, if the buyer is using conventional financing, the lender isn't going to finance an assignment of contract. The other challenge with wholesaling to a retail buyer is it's difficult to pre-sell the property before you actually own it. 
What I mean by that is the best way to find a retail buyer is to list the property for sale on the multiple listing service or MLS. Once a property is listed on the MLS, it becomes public. So it's also on Zillow, Redfin and Realtor.com. So a lot of people see it, including retail buyers. So how does a wholesaler wholesale a property to a retail buyer utilizing the MLS? Well, that's where innovation comes in. The technical definition of innovation is simply an agreement that replaces an existing contract with a new one. Here's how it's used in wholesale real estate. Let's say that a wholesaler enters into a purchase contract with a seller for a property for 100,000. In that contract, there is a pre-marketing clause that gives the wholesaler the right to publicly market the property for sale. Then the wholesaler lists the property for sale on the MLS for let's say 150,000 and a retail buyer comes along and makes an offer for let's say 145,000. Next, the wholesaler uses a novation and the original contract for 100,000 is terminated and a new contract is created between the seller and the new buyer for 145,000. The new contract contains all the same terms and conditions as the original contract, other than the wholesaler gets to keep the proceeds above what the seller agreed to sell it for in the original contract. In this case, the seller agreed to 100,000 and the wholesaler found a retail buyer willing to pay 145,000. So after closing fees, the wholesaler gets to keep the difference. Now keep in mind, for an ovation to work wholesaling to a retail buyer, the property would need to be in good enough condition that it would pass a retail buyer mortgage inspection. So it works best on properties that are in fair condition. The fourth method to wholesale houses with no money is to wholesale creative financing deals. Creative financing is when instead of contracting with a seller for all cash, you get the seller to agree to wait to get some or all of their money. Now this could be subject to where you take over the seller's existing loan or it could be seller financing where the seller agrees to be the bank and finance the purchase for you or a number of other creative financing strategies. The thing is most people think of creative financing as a long-term hold strategy, which it certainly could be, but the reality is you can structure a creative financing deal with a seller and then wholesale that deal to an investor for a premium. Investors will gladly pay you to buy your creative financing deals that are little to no money down deals. Now, the reason why learning how to wholesale creative financing is so important is because with creative financing, you can typically offer a much higher price to a seller than an all cash offer. This gives you more options when a seller doesn't want to accept your low cash offer. It literally opens the door to so many more opportunities. I recently did a video where I break down in detail how to wholesale creative financing deals, and I even give away for free my creative financing wholesale calculator, which tells you exactly how to structure deals and how much you can wholesale them for. It's a game changer, so if you're serious about wholesaling creative financing deals, I'll put the link to that video in the description below for you. Method number five to wholesale houses with no money is actually not a wholesale method at all, but it fits perfectly with making money on distressed properties. You see, as you're out there in your marketplace talking to sellers and making offers, the majority of sellers aren't going to accept your low cash offer or agree to do an ovation or agree to sell on creative terms. The majority are going to not be motivated enough for any of those options. They want to sell, but they want a higher price and they want cashed out. Most wholesalers throw those leads away, which doesn't make any sense to me. You've done all the work to find the lead, get on the phone or meet them in person, analyze the deal and make an offer just to find out they want more than you can pay and then you throw the lead away? That doesn't seem like a smart way to leverage your hard work. Instead, go and get your real estate license and offer to list those properties for sale on the MLS. For example, let's say that you're talking to a seller who has a property that you need to buy for 225,000 cash for it to be a good deal and they reject that offer and they also don't wanna do a novation or creative financing. In fact, the lowest price they will accept is let's say 300,000, which is basically a retail price. If you have a real estate license, you could offer to represent the seller as an agent and list it for them and sell it on the MLS to a retail buyer and charge a 3% listing fee. If the seller agrees and you list it and sell it for 300,000, you would earn a $9,000 commission. Not bad for what used to be a throwaway lead. And I did a video about all the ways you can monetize having a real estate license, as well as how you can join my nationwide agent team. Watch that video now and I'll see you on the next video.